Howdy from Destination Everywhere. We're roaming Wyoming, the cowboy state. That's right here in the Northwest USA. We're your hosts, Mandy, Orlando, and that's Abraham. In this video, we go to Douglas, Ayers Natural Bridge, Casper, Buffalo, and Devil's Tower. We hop on trains, hunt for jackalopes, and paddle under the Ayers Natural Bridge. We hike in Casper, where we stumble upon a country music concert and western wear, and we sample Wyoming's official beer. And we ride through history in a covered wagon at the Historical Trails Museum and explore the charming town of Buffalo, saving the best till last, America's first national monument. Yes, it's that rock from that movie. Hop in the back seat next to Abraham and we'll show you more. First stop, Douglas, a tiny town with a larger-than-life legend, the legend of the jackalope. What on earth is a jackalope? It's a cross between a jackrabbit and an antelope, of course. And we found it at the Douglas Railroad Interpretive Center. There are statues everywhere, even on the top of the hill coming into town. I'm not joking. But it's only a made-up mythical thing, just a bit of fun. The city even issues a hunting license valid on the 31st of June. So, where were we? Oh yes, the Railroad Interpretive Center, or its nickname, the Open Air Locomotive Park. This was once a passenger depot, now home to locomotives and dining cars that you can climb aboard. Aren't you coming, Abraham? I will be right here looking for jackalopes. Okay, suit yourself. It's a lovely drive into the countryside to Ayers Natural Bridge, past the cows and the pronghorn. Here we are. Oh, see that? Beware of rattlesnakes. Well, I guess apart from serpents, it's an ideal place for a paddle and a picnic. But guess what I saw slithering underneath this rock? Yes, I did. So the plan for Casper was a quick stop to visit the famous planetarium and see the night sky, but our car had different ideas and we had to stay two days longer. So not having to rush, we took a leisurely walk along the River Platte and took time to admire the wildflowers of the West. We made our way up a steep hill, great exercise, to the Historical Trails Interpretive Center, a museum showcasing the trails taken by the pioneers in America's great expansion west. Think the Oregon Trail starting it all in 1840 from Independence, Missouri to Oregon. The story of the pioneers in their covered wagon is told in the sound and light show and there's even a simulated ride, which is quite fun. Then came the California Trail of gold seekers, looking to strike rich and doubling the number of travelers along the trail, but also doubling the number of fights and disease. After the gold rushes came the Mormons, seeking new lands to worship freely in. And lastly, the Pony Express Trail, the route for delivering mail. How hysterical is this job at? For young, skinny, wiry fellows not over 18, must be expert riders, willing to risk death daily, Orphans preferred. 25 bucks a week and they'll throw in a pistol and a Bible to keep you moral. Oh, so that's what a wiry fellow looks like, eh? I did wonder. This trails museum also talks about the Native Americans and how the trails encroached upon their tribal ancestral land, how they were pushed to their limits, how fights broke out and how treaties were signed and then broken. It shows two sides of the same story. The natives say they had no choice but to defend the land. The pioneers say they had to fight back to protect their families. The natives say the army violated yet another treaty, so they attacked. The pioneers say the Indians were hostile and they suffered unfair attacks. The museum is a must. It's interesting and thought-provoking and the staff are absolutely delightful. And the views from up high are an added bonus. Downtown is very walkable with little boutiques, old-fashioned soda fountains, and we kept seeing Lou Taubus. 
What's that all about then? Oh, a corral of famous brands and 10,000 pairs of boots in stock? Let's see what Western fashion is all about. No boots for me, but I highly recommend buying a pair of cowgirl jeans. They fit like a glove. Around the corner at David Street Station, we found a summer festival and free open air concert. Oh, is that the time? We heard Black Tooth Brewing Company had Wyoming's official beer and flights, so it would have been rude not to pop in. We're at the Black Tooth Brewing Company in Casper, Wyoming. I've got a Bomber Mountain. Oh, it's an Abbott Hill. This is one of my favorites. I love Abbott Hill. I have a Copper Mule, a ginger lime cream ale. <laughs> Tastes like a cross between a margarita and a beer. And this one is an Impair, spelled P E A R. And the last one is a brown ale, and it is called the Saddle Bronc because we are in Wyoming. That is lovely. I feel like I need to burp, but I won't burp on camera. <laughs> Just so we're doing our due diligence, let's compare Black Tooth with the Frontier Brewing Company around the corner, a self-serve purveyor of ales with a unique beer wall. Look at this. It's a whole beer wall and you can pour what you want. You put your card in here, and then I'm gonna have Frontier Sweet Georgia Brown. That's strong. That's definitely a, a brown ale. That's really strong. I like it. After a little chat with this guy about his fish skin cowboy boots, it was time to say goodbye to Casper and hello to Buffalo, a historic, quaint, charming town halfway between Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming and Mount Rushmore in South Dakota, hailed as a top 10 true western town that keeps the old west alive. This is the High Street, and this historic building is the haunted Occidental Hotel. Its famous past guests, or should I say ghosts, include President Teddy Roosevelt, Buffalo Bill, Calamity Jane, and Butch Cassidy. Its restaurant, The Virginian, has fine Western dining, and right next door is the Busy Bee Cafe. You'll recognize the name if you're a fan of the cowboy drama Longmire, because it was filmed right here. And just down the street is Crazy Woman Square, a corner park with an outdoor stage, public bathrooms, and a beautiful mural. Oh, and a few sheep statues. Abraham, what are you laughing at? Nothing. You be nice to those sheep. Across from the park is another lovely mural. This charming small town of Buffalo is so pretty, and there are buffaloes everywhere. Well, not real ones, but buffaloes on bridges and even on a park bench. But there's no time to sit on a buffalo bench in Buffalo because we have saved the best till last. Devil's Tower, Wyoming. Nearly, Abraham. Look at all those animals in the fields. Does this look familiar to anyone? Because it was used in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. But its bigger claim to fame is being America's very first national monument. It takes one to one and a half hours to walk around the perimeter, or one to 12 hours to climb it. You choose. As you walk through the woods, you may notice that people leave prayer bundles in the trees. 
Devil's Tower was considered a very spiritual place and sacred by the Native Americans. It's so breathtaking here, it makes you wonder how it was all formed. Something about molten rock and sedimentary rock eroding 50 million years ago. Isn't that right, Abraham? Nope, not interested. Come here, sweetheart, for a perfect family photo before we go. That's the one. You'll see lots of wildlife living around Devil's Tower, like cows, deer, squirrels, and we even saw a bull snake. But perhaps the loudest of all are the prairie dogs. Walking through town, prairie dog town that is, we found this beautiful sculpture. It's the Circle of Sacred Smoke, part of the International Peace Project by Japanese artist Junkyu Muto. It represents a puff of smoke from a ceremonial pipe used by Native American people. And on that peaceful note, that's a wrap for Roaming Wyoming Part 2. Wasn't it brilliant? If you loved your trip with us, you know what to do. Subscribe, like and share. And tell us what you enjoyed the most in the comments below. Thank you for letting us share the world with the world and we'll see you in Roaming Wyoming Part 3.